one of the, if not actually the most popular, I would say at least widely available budget phones, is back in its 2019 iteration, the Moto G7 Plus. And today we are taking a closer look to see if it's any good. And therefore I already actually have to start with the price. Because officially it's around 300 euros here, where I have to say that I would wish for it to be closer to 250 already officially, and over time more like 200. Because the issue for me is that now that Xiaomi got internationally quite easily available, and I still have to say that I think they offer more bang for the buck, Moto will have a harder time selling their phones, even though on the other hand they have some distinct advantages over Xiaomi that we will talk a little bit more about later, but now it's up for the design and build quality. And when it comes to the design, one thing that I always like is if we have a curved back, because that just makes the phone feel a little bit more compact in hand, even though when we take a look at the front we will see that it's not that compact, because the phone is still quite easily usable, but it's just a 6.2 inch display with quite big bezels and therefore it feels more like a 6.4 inch display with smaller bezels all around. But it feels good, build quality is nice, button placement here for the power button and for the volume record is good. They also don't rattle, very good feedback and also a very good placement for the fingerprint reader that I would say works good. It's not the fastest one, but it's very reliable and it's in a good position, so it works absolutely fine. Other than that, we have the camera protruding a bit. Then we have something actually quite unique and something that I haven't seen a lot of times. Dual SIM plus SD card, so no compromises here. Enter the mic, obviously. Nothing on the left. On the bottom, we have the speaker that works with the earpiece. We have the headphone jack and USB Type-C. What we also have on the front is no, no notification LED, but the mother of all notches. And I have to say that if I look at this big status bar and thinking back about at times when phones didn't have the whole bezel as craze, I think the status bar was like a third, if not a fourth of this one. So huge, huge, yeah, notch. Even though I also have to say this, it's not a huge issue for me because I don't really stretch out for movies because then this gets distracting because it is quite a big disturbance. It almost feels like someone would pull a finger through my ear so I can see it. It's not really possible, but that's kind of how it feels. But yeah, that's that. Otherwise, it's a flat front. And like I said, good build quality. Everything feels smooth. Even though when it comes to the build quality, I would have to knock maybe one thing. If we check the back, feels like solid glass. But now let's check, for example, here the glass on the front of the OnePlus. This feels solid. And now this is my little bit of an issue that I know no one really cares about how hollow this feels. And I know no one really makes these tests anyways, but it just shows that this phone ju uh, just doesn't feel quite as super like, like dense. It feels a little bit like hollow. And actually this front glass doesn't feel really like glass. It feels more like very smooth. I have to give it to that and the olefobic coating is good, but more like plastic. But talking already about plastic, let's go into the display. And here I have to talk about a few things, like for example, that I once again forgot to change the language. So you can actually understand all the menus, because when it comes to the display, this actually looks good, but as you can maybe see, I used night light on. Because out of the box, and maybe you can see it now, this display is crazy cold. And one thing that I never liked about Moto or stock Android is that we have pretty much no option to change anything. What we can do is we can change the colors from saturated boosted to natural, but that doesn't really change the calibration because the white point is so off. Now, it's not really an, a solution, but it's a workaround if you use nightlight and then, for example, set the value to the way you want to, like, for example, I did, you can kind of get the white a little bit more yellowy or a little bit warmer if it's just too cold for you, which it was for me. Other than that, brightness is absolutely fine for a mid-range phone, even though I have to also call out two things that are not that great about this display. First of all, viewing angles, because if you use it and just look a little bit like this or a little bit off angle, you either lose a lot of brightness or the color shifts quite a lot. And since this is not an AMOLED display, I also have seen quite a lot of IPS glow and definitely not a dark black because it looks more like a grayish yeah, tint. But otherwise it's still fine. It's a good display. Sharpness is fine, quality is good, but this is not the typical quality that I usually see from sh from Moto because especially with the Moto X4, it had pretty much the best mid-range IPS display, 
they kind of compromised a little bit. Like I said, it could have better viewing angles. The calibration should be better. I would wish for more options. And what I've also noticed is that colors in certain scenarios, like for example, red and green are just too dark. They are just off. Not the saturation is wrong, it's the colors itself. Now about the display, uh, the speakers. Okay, we have quite a powerful bottom firing speaker and as you have maybe heard, also quite a powerful earpiece. And this results in definitely, I would definitely say this, the best mid-range speaker system. And I had a hard time deciding if I should already maybe even give this five stars because it is so good. I mean, it doesn't have like, for example, Sony, though the Atmos software or an equalizer for that. It is what it is, but that sound is actually pretty clear. It doesn't distort, it's very loud, a good stereo separation. And I would say therefore, just because of the lack of some maybe a little bit more richness in the sound and some equalization options it's pretty much the strongest four and a half star speaker out there still very very good and the closest thing that you could not even sometimes get on a flagship now about the headphone jack that is at the bottom i have to say that one is good in terms of loudness but it sounded a little bit bloaty so i was lacking a little bit of the details and it's not super clear but it's still above average just to, it's good it's good now performance, that's the thing, Snapdragon 636 and it performs like a 636, it's nice and smooth, it's very consistent, but you definitely see that this is not a new chipset anymore, because it's not crazy fast, everything is just a little bit slower, but it's smooth. I mean, if you are about fluidity, you are absolutely fine here, but if you are about like sheer speed and kind of responsiveness and zippiness, this is not what you will get. But even though this is maybe not a high rating anymore that you will see for this CPU, for a review of mine, this is still totally neat enough for most people. So I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you that by now, by these days, there is just way more headroom at the bottom, but it, it feels totally fine. It doesn't get warm or anything like that. So also that is good. When it comes to the battery life, I this time didn't get the time to measure the charge, but thinking about it, this is a 3000 mAh battery. I would assume like maybe an hour 40 or something like that, but it's just an assumption. Something I did not actually measure, but what I did is um, one hour of YouTube, 11%. That is about an average level, nothing special, especially since we have no AMOLED, which usually is way more efficient in terms of videos. This is an okay value. And about the battery life, I have to say this. I got about five hours on mobile data and about seven, seven and a half hours on Wi-Fi. But I've noticed that this year, for some reason, every phone seems to have kind of in relation to what I had before, worse battery life. So I kind of assume that now that I've started this year using a little bit of a heavier setup, which means a lot more apps, what was usually my daily driver setup that I didn't use quite in that level last year, that might have something to do with that. But since this year starting new, this is the new level. And therefore this is still an absolutely good battery life. But especially what I've noticed this year more so than last year, that standby drain, on mobile data is actually quite weak and that might have to do something with Android Pie or my reception, I can't tell you, because I had no issues with that. I also had good call quality, no issues with that. Reception was fine. If it's good for phones or good for data, all that was fine. Now in terms of software, it's, it's stock Android. I don't know really what else to say because obviously we still have the whole Moto Suite, which means we can kind of toggle the flash or the camera in this case as you can see, and if it should, it should also turn off the flash, but, but otherwise I'm not quite sure what else to say. I mean, yeah, obviously we have the draw, we have the quick settings, we have the typical look. Yeah, not sure what else to say. We have the same functionality, Moto doesn't really add anything, which is kind of okay, I guess, but that's that. Now about the camera, now, I'm pretty sure since this is running a Snapdragon CPU, there is some support for the Pixel Cam, but I did not have the time to try that out. But what I can tell you is, for example, here we have the change between the auto and the manual mode. Then, for example, active photos, the timer, HDR. And this is actually one thing that I have to talk a lot about because I have not ever seen a phone that without HDR has such poor results. Otherwise, we get portrait, cutout, and so forth and so on. So. The app gets the job done, solid, but let's look at the actual results. And here I wanna start off with the selfies. And these all have been done, as you can see, by the way, 
with the front facing cam and in this case with HDR and here it's not as visible you can see definitely for example here it works way better already if you use HDR because you lose a lot out of here with the dynamic range lacking a little bit and it gets already better with HDR quality is fine the only thing that I've noticed is that pictures don't really look all that all that natural it looks a little bit kind of artificial but good sharpness good details white point was good skin tones look fine sharpness looks fine the bokeh mode is good so generally totally fine but what i've also noticed is that the moment the lighting gets worse even indoors with quite good lighting light here for example it pretty quickly degrades then everything gets way softer generally for all this you can see especially here and then even the the screen flash won't help and especially in super low light situations it pretty much completely falls apart but talking about low light and hdr like i said now this camera maybe it's a mid-range thing but doesn't have kind of a dedicated night mode yet at least not by stock by default but if you use the hdr mode you can't actually get it because this is the picture taken normally and this is the picture taken with HDR. So this is almost, if you wouldn't know better, a night mode. I mean, obviously you don't get the lower exposure or the longer exposure and the longer shutter. Therefore, it just doesn't really help because as you can see, it's still quite blurry. But we'll later see of how much processing actually happens with the HDR because this once again is without and this is with, so it gets noticeably brighter. You, you maybe don't really get always more details, especially not at, light, at night, but yeah, this is like night mode light in some ways and here for example the same thing so yeah but for some reason uh, now now here's almost where the weird parts are so actually i'm just gonna jump to that now this is the picture taken normally and now look at those edges these are very soft and generally the picture is very soft you don't really get much details and now let's turn on hdr and this is a completely different picture i mean now pretty much razor sharp contrast at the end way more details now, how is this possible that this is normally, and this is HDR, it should not look that much different because this, for example, leads to already my conclusion. You cannot use, if you want decent results, this camera without HDR because here the same thing once again, just look at now, bam, HDR. I mean, that, that's like over-processing already. This, this is too soft. This should be sharper. This should have, have more details which you kind of get now, but this now, I mean, it's post-processing, so it's a little bit over the top after all, but this is fine, this is good. But for example, here also, no details here again, and then we get a lot of details. I mean, not the biggest fan of that I'm absolutely reliant on HDR. Here, once again, it looks even more, so here you can definitely see the over-contrasting and the over-sharpening that makes the picture pleasing, but without HDR, all pictures pretty much turn out very soft here once again. I mean, the difference is extreme. Look at this, no details. Everything is very, very soft. And now all of a sudden we have those, but I mean, you definitely see some kind of over sharpening going on. So not quite sure where I should leave it at because if you are okay with the over processing or the heavy processing, it's a very nice mid range cam, especially since it had OIS, it's fine. That it, it, it doesn't feel really all that natural to me. Now about the videos, I'm once again going to add them without any changes in RAW to the end of the video. You can then judge for this. I'm just going to let you know this. On the front facing cam in 4K, the bitrate was too low because it's the same as a 1080p and therefore just was too grainy wasn't really go all that good in 1080p it was fine for the main camera the same thing a little bit but not quite as heavy because there also the bitrate should have been higher because i've still seen a little bit too much artifacting and graininess going on on faster movement but it was nice and kind of stable it looked good quality was fine autofocus had quite some troubles especially since i didn't have the best light just yet but generally this is where the camera stands and therefore let's already get to the conclusion of this one here priced at 300 it's good solid phone and the good thing here is it's a Motorola which means it's pretty much everywhere available. The price will come down to I would say at least like 250 quite soon and over time let's say a few more months and we are at 200 and then I have a way easier time to recommend it because the good thing is what this one has for example over Xiaomi is it's, it's the software because if you want a clean software experience without any bloat 
and it just works here without having to wait for a global ROM or anything like that. You have NFC, you have White Wine L1, you have all of that, so nothing that you are really compromising on. But what you are compromising on is that it just doesn't feel quite as compact as some of the Xiaomi phones at that price range or even lower. The display quality, the little bit of a hollowness feel. Therefore, you get though pretty much in this price range absolutely the best speaker. Performance is still fine, but you can get better performance already at this price range. The battery life is absolute as also fine. And the camera, I'm a little bit mixed about the camera because it shows potential, but then it also shows that if you don't use HDR, that there is not really potential there anymore. So don't get me wrong, it's a nice phone. It's a little bit hard for me to recommend it though since I know all the competition. If I wouldn't know the competition and you are just asking me which phone should I get that I can buy just in a store that I know the software is reliable, something that is kind of familiar due to stock Android and so on, I might point you towards Moto. What I would also point you towards though is something like the Moto X4 that you can get for like 170 by these days already, at least in Germany, that offers the way better display, not though the speaker or some other things because, I mean, it's overall solid and it's one of the very few phones with dual SIM and SD card. So it definitely has some things going for it, but I don't think that Moto at the moment for right now is offering the value that you just can get somewhere else. Solid phone? But I would always have to say just about it that, not really anything else. It's by far, in my opinion, and I don't know other markets, it's not the best best bang for your buck or something like that phone anymore. That 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 time has passed since since the international market just got way wider since we have different brands available now for that price, fighting for that spot. Okay. Yeah, and now the video samples. Until next time. Bye. Okay, so this would be the front-facing video cam of the Moto G7 Plus in 4K30. Even though, at least judging from the samples that I checked beforehand, it doesn't look like good 4K30, not even like good 1080p. Because even though it's just in terms of actual numbers 4K, it doesn't look like it. The actual result is not the same. But I have to check that on the monitor, so this is not a final judgment at all. Sound, you can judge it on your own. Stabilization and crop seem fine, but I definitely, like I said, have to check the actual output because judging it based here from the viewfinder that is not the final judgment it actually looks decent but i don't think it will be when i actually see it